All right, so it's good to be back. We had a good two days off. I could not find a place with a whiteboard that was open because it was Christmas. And I don't know, I'm crazy and I wanna do these problems. But it is exciting to be back and we have a very cool problem today. Um, well, I mean, cool in the sense that we do these problems to uh, continue to sustain our livelihoods and these are actually kind of boring. But test if a binary tree is symmetric. So the question is, we need to test if a binary tree is symmetrical in its structure and symmetrical in value. So if we draw a line down the middle of our tree, down straight through the root, vertical line, will the tree fold on itself and will the values be equivalent? So here are examples. If we have null, that is basically an equivalent tree. I mean, it is just null, but if the root is null of our binary tree, then it's symmetrical. There's nothing to compare. If we just have one node, if we draw a line straight through, it's still symmetrical. If we have a tree like this, our root is one, we have two and two. If we draw a line straight through, do you see how they'll fold on each other? And those twos are the same and it's structurally equivalent. And if it's going to have value equivalence, it must be structurally equivalent. Here is an example where things go wrong. We see one, its left value is two, and its right value is null. This is where if we fold the tree on itself, we're not going to have equivalent values. And just to further this, do you see? It stays symmetrical. This stays has a root of two, left and right, one. It stays symmetrical here, but where do we fail? We stay symmetrical here, but right there. If we draw a line, everything will fold over and work except for the four and the null right there. So those will not match. Four does not equal null. They're structurally different. This is not even value difference. We could put a five there. If we put a five there, it still fails. Why? Because values are not the same. These values are not the same. If we fold them, these are the two values that would fold onto each other and they need to be the same and they're not. This is why this tree fails. So this is the problem. Test if a binary tree is symmetric. A lot of people ask, it, normally when we deal with trees, it's recursive. But a lot of people have problems with thinking, how do I traverse a tree? How does this recursion pan out? And let me give you an example to show you how you need to think about this problem so that you understand how the recursion and traversal will happen. All right, so forget about trees, forget about recursion, forget that, okay, we're in an interview, high pressure situation, let's go back to what we are doing. I give you an array. Tell me if this array is symmetric. If we put a cut through the middle, if we put a cut through here, tell me if this array is symmetric. This is kind of like checking if a string is a palindrome. So what are you gonna do? You're going, your eyes, your eyes are gonna go here. What, what are you doing? What, what are we doing fundamentally? We're doing a pair comparison. We're comparing pairs. Are those equivalent? Yes. What's the next pair? We go one more inward. What's the next pair? And then what do we see? Four does not equal three. This is not a symmetric array. So now, what you've established is you've put that aside. It's a tree. We need to find symmetric, whether it's symmetric. You put that aside and you get back to what am I really trying to solve? What are my points of interest? And in recursion, every single recursive, recursive thing is going to take in points of interest. And our points of interest are two values. We're going to be doing pair comparisons. This is huge because when we're working with recursion, the way we craft the signature of our recursive function is going to be based on what we're trying to solve, what we're interested in. We see that we're going to be interested in pair comparison. So our recursive function is most certainly at the least going to take in pairs of values. So now let's get back to the binary tree and see what pairs we need to compare. All right, so here, let's color code everything. Here's our example that we were working, well, a little different from what we were working with before. And remember, pair comparisons. Now we're thinking, forget the code, do this in your head, do this by hand. Like, how are you going to do this? So first off, we know the root, no matter what, a root is symmetric by itself. We don't even need to think about pair comparison. In our recursive function, we could pass the root as both of the two, two uh, items being compared because it's going to compare to itself and it's symmetric. So what do we need to compare next? Let's change color. Next, we know we need to fold these two guys together. Okay, those need to be equivalent, but then where do we go from there? This is the key thing that's going to craft our function for us. So what we need to do is let's, this is the left subtree, this is the right subtree. So this is a left subtree, this is a right subtree. So the, 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 the left value, this guy, who does he need to be equal to? He needs to be equal to him. So what does that say? 
Fine. Recording? Yeah. Uh, am I too loud? No, 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 no. So notice, okay, it's tough to write a recursive function, but let's not even look at the code. We haven't even got to code yet. What we notice is our left subtree and right subtree we're working with, these nodes representing the root of those subtrees, we notice the left subtree's left must equal the right subtree's right. This is part one. Now, what else do we see? We also see that this guy needs to equal this guy. So what does that mean? That must equal that. Well, what is that? Let's write another rule. Well, here's rule one, here's rule two. So what we need, what we need to happen is we need the left subtree's left to equal the right subtree's right. We need the left subtree's right to equal the right subtree's left. We see that doesn't happen here. So this first thing passes, but this does not happen. Think about this. This is, this is the answer. This is what needs to happen. This is how the traversal needs to happen. A recursive function will take a left subtree and a right subtree. It's going to enforce these rules. If these rules fail at any point in our traversal, it's over. The tree is not symmetric. If it fails here, then we're gonna bubble up the answer that it failed, it's false. So for this guy, for this guy, he's gonna say, is my left and right symmetric? He's gonna say, is my left and right symmetric? So let's get into the recursive code and see how the code pans out that now that we've deduced these rules, okay? All right, so here, oh. All right, so here is everything converted to the code. Nothing has changed. All we're doing is converting this to logic. Everything that we just explained is what we're about to do. If the root is null, immediately we short circuit execution, we're finished. It's a symmetric tree, we're done. But what we do is, if it's not null, then we need to go into our recursion and we need to check the left subtree and the right subtree. Remember back to what we just did. Okay, so now we go into here. If the left subtree and right subtree, if our nodes are null, they are symmetric, they are, are non-existent, and we fold correctly to both non-existent positions, we return true. The check passes for those two subtrees. But if they're both not null, if they're both not null, then we need to check the value, and then we need to continue our recursion to the left and right of the node we are sitting at, and we need to continue to check symmetry. First, we check their values. If their values are the same, good. We're done with these nodes we're holding. And then what we need to do is we need to check to make sure that our left subtree's left is equivalent to our right subtree's right, and that our left subtree's right is equivalent to our right subtree's left. So as you can see here, left, left subtree's left needs to be equal to right subtree's right. Left subtree's right needs to be equivalent to the right subtree's left. So we enforce that, we continue our recursion, and we return, we, we will bubble up the answer. When we say return in a recursive, when we return a recursive call, we know that whatever that recursion will return to us will bubble back up the call stack and return our answer to our top level caller. And then finally, we return false. When would we reach this line? First, we know that both nodes are null, then we know both nodes aren't null. If one node has a value and one node is null, or this node, if, if the left subtree has a value and the right subtree is null, or the right subtree has a value and left subtree is null, then we it's impossible to have symmetry because they are structurally different. We cannot even do a value check, and therefore we return false. So this is our policy. This is our, whenever we define a recur recursion function to operate on a tree, it's as if we're defining a policy that we must enforce through our recursion and through our iteration through the tree. So this is gonna bubble its way down. It's gonna go down the tree, come back up, go, go like that, do its like searching and, and, and go down the tree and do its checks. So what would the time and space complexity be? So let's really think, think about this. The time is kind of easy because it's a, we're going to need to t check n nodes. In order to check if the tree is symmetric, we must check all of the nodes. We have n nodes. We declare the number of nodes is n. So we have O of n time as our time complexity. Our space complexity, why is it O of h, O of our height? During our recursion, we are only going to keep up to the height of the tree. Our call stack is only going to have as many calls as as tall as the tree. So when we're going down, we're gonna do go like this, we're gonna go like this, go like this. Our 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 the, the amount of space we use on the call stack is not proportional to the amount of nodes, it's proportional to the height of the tree because we're doing a height traversal. It doesn't work out exactly to the height, but it is proportional to the height and it scales with the height as our input gets large. So we're gonna see this in different problems, the space being O of H. So it's going to become more familiar with you as we do more problems. But 
could the space be O of n? You know, if it's a skew tree, could it be worst space O of n? Because yes, the call stack could go that deep, but think about this. If, if we had a skewed tree, it would immediately fail. If our tree was skewed like this, and we did a comparison like that, we would fail on the first comparison. It wouldn't really make sense to say that the worst case would be O. Well, it would make sense, but we would instantly fail our comparisons. So in a problem like this, why would you even get a skewed tree? So the thing is, O of H is like the more common, like it, it makes a lot more sense than saying O of N, worst case, because that probably would not even happen. It would fail on the first comparison. So this is the problem. We just walk through how you think about the recursion. Do not, the thing about recursive functions, best way to get the signature of your function is to think about what is my policy? What must I enforce? What do I need to know through every single iteration of this recursion? What does each frame need? In this problem, we need two nodes. We, we didn't know which nodes initially, but we knew we needed to compare pairs. We knew we needed to compare pairs of something. In this problem, it turned out to be pairs of subtrees. In other problems, it could be anything else. If we're doing backtracking, and it's like the n queens problem or something, maybe we're, we, we need to keep the data of how many placements we've done. So it all depends on what your function needs, and the more problems you do, the more you improve at this. So this is this problem. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. We're trying to do a video every day to um, improve engineers, and the whole point of this channel is to empower the software engineer to perform better in the interview, know what to expect, and perform at their best. And that's what this is all about. So, yeah.